This tutorial will give you a general introduction to the map navigation and features of the OCOF website. First, zoom in to your area of interest. You can enter an address or place name in the search bar here, or navigate to an area by zooming in as you would in Google Maps. The map is showing Bolinas Lagoon, an area with low-lying infrastructure which may be vulnerable to rising tides and storm events that must be accounted for. There are four sets of options to click through on the toolbar on the left. They include topics of flooding, waves, currents, duration, and flood potential, sea level rise projections in 25 centimeter increments, storm flooding scenarios based on frequency in years, and additional data layers that can be overlaid to view potential impacts to the built and natural environment. The key to the color coding for your particular selection is on the right. You can hide this toolbar by clicking here. Click here to see a definition of what the topics indicate. The default is flooding, which shows the average extent of flooding, flood depth, and flood prone areas. These layers can be viewed along with different combinations of sea level rise and or storm surge scenarios. If you click on waves, you will switch to viewing wave locations and height and you will see the legend on the right side of the screen that corresponds to that topic. At the bottom of the toolbar on the left, there is an option to change the opacity of the layer. This allows you to better see the land features under the modeled layer. Just above the opacity option are additional layers you may select, which could be of interest. These layers were compiled from various sources and can help visualize the effects relative to natural and built features. When you add one of these layers, the legend is added on the right side. To help inform what amount of sea level rise is right for your planning purposes, there is a separate guidance page that opens when you click here. The tool can be used by clicking through all the sea level rise options, essentially clicking through time, to show how long an area may persist into the future without being inundated. You can also choose to use the helper to provide a comparative look at some of the most commonly cited reports providing sea level rise projections. You can either use the first slider bar to view what sea level rise projections correlate with the year you have chosen, or the second slider bar to see what date ranges correlate with the amount of sea level rise you have chosen. Full citations and links to each report can be found at the bottom of the page. Let's return to the map and scroll through the different sea level rise options. Leave flooding on, which can include sea level rise alone, storm surge alone, or sea level rise with storm surge. With 50 cm sea level rise chosen and no storm, you can see that this area does not become inundated. With 50 cm of sea level rise chosen, along with a 20 year storm, you can see that the area now experiences flooding. Now click on Flood Potential. This feature shows the user that if the uncertainty of the total water level has a bias due to the maximum possible digital elevation model and numerical model error, then flooding could be underestimated. Based on this uncertainty, a maximum flooding extent, a minimum flooding extent, for the particular sea level rise and storm scenario selected is shown. Remember, you can click here to view the definition of the flood potential topic. We'll now switch to waves and switch our location to the Marin headlands. Scroll down the legend on the right to see what each of the colors indicate. Now, click through the storm frequency projections again to watch wave height increase with increasing storm intensity. With an increasing rate of sea level rise, you can see wave height intensify along the outer coast. Now, switch to currents for the same area. Click through the various scenarios to see the current velocity change. Only in the worst case scenario does the current velocity seem to increase for this area. Staying in the Marin Headlands, switch to the topic of duration. Zoom in closer to the shoreline to see the colored points, indicating the length of time in hours that flooding will last during a tidal cycle. One additional feature for the bay is the ability to compare flooding scenarios. If you are viewing a site within the bay, check this box. A separate window will open to select your additional scenario. The difference between the two scenarios will appear in yellow. The storm scenario has a king tide option as well, based upon the last highest tide recorded in the bay on January 30, 2014. 
King tides that occur annually provide a real-world example of the possible effects of rising sea levels. One of the most useful features of the interactive map is the ability to create a report for your area of interest. Select that option here, the top right of the map. You can hover over each button to view details on that option. You can upload a KML or shape file to define your area by clicking here, or you can define an area on the map by clicking points on the map to create a polygon. The polygon you create should contain no greater than 2,000 acres. After creating a polygon, double click on the area. A PDF containing information from the model for your selected area will then download to your desktop. Another option is to export the dataset you created with the interactive features and topics. To do that, click on the farthest right button here. Define your area with a polygon and a link will be created, which allows you to download a zipped file. This file contains metadata, raw data, and an image or map file in TIFF format. When you create a link to download data, the file comes with a download summary. You can always click on the help button here to have a reminder of what the different functions of the map are. If you're ready to use the OCOF website, get started by visiting the Get Started tab here for more information, including frequently asked questions on the modeling system, Cosmos, which drives the mapping tool. On behalf of Gulf of the Farallons National Marine Sanctuary, USGS, Point Blue Conservation Science, and all our stakeholders and partners, we hope this map will give you the tools you need to plan for the future. We welcome your feedback. Please respond through the website.